plague of locust. There was the plague of darkness. And it's a parakeet posik of Aleph. Yom Hashem el Moshe and Hey Yodcha lo Shemayim. Extend your hand towards the heaven, towards the sky. The Choshech help Eretz Yisrael, and darkness will come upon Egypt. The Yomesh Choshech, and the darkness will have a certain a tangibility to it. Normally, darkness is an absence of light, but over here, it's more than an absence of light. It will actually be have a thickness to it, a tangibility to it, as we'll see in a moment. Now, this darkness they had, as we'll see, the first three days of darkness, they were able to, to move. There was movement. The second days of darkness, they were actually, they were locked into the places. As we'll see, Chazal say, if they were standing, they couldn't sit, and if they were sitting, they couldn't stand. They were just locked in that position for three days. But the first three days of darkness was just, was not, was, they couldn't see, they couldn't illuminate it. Why did they take a candle and illuminate the darkness? The darkness that was there, it wasn't a darkness, which the darkness that light was able to dispel the darkness. We say light could dispel darkness. This darkness over here was not a darkness which could be dispelled. And therefore, even if they would attempt to light a light, it couldn't in any way push away that darkness to allow them to see. That was the first three days. The second three days, as, I, as it says, Yomesh, there'll be a tangibility to that darkness that if one was sitting, one couldn't stand, one was lying, one couldn't get up, so on and so forth. Now the question is, what, why did we need a different type of darkness the second three day period? Because we'll see in a moment why what happened during the days of darkness and why darkness. So if you turn to the Posuk Chavbeis, Vayet Moshe es yodu al hashemayim veichoshech hafeilo. There was this intense darkness. Chol eretz mitzrayim shloshis yomim for three days. And what happened during this three day period? Lo ro ishtach es ochiv. Each person did not see his fellow. Then it says, and in addition, for three days, a person was not able to stand up. But Kalal Yisrael, they had light in their, in their communities. So take a look in Rashi. The first three days of just intense darkness, they couldn't see one another. It was literally uh, intensified darkness over this. Which the Pasuk says. If a person was sitting, he couldn't stand. If a person was standing, he couldn't sit. They were just locked into that position. Why was the plague of darkness brought upon the Egyptians? Because among the Jews, they were, the, they were also evil people. What was the level of evil? I mean, they were, they, were, they were all pagans to a degree. What was their, what do we attribute the evilness to? And they died during the first three days of darkness. So the Egyptians should not see the downfall of the Jews, the Jews who deserve to die. The whole idea is the God of the Jews is punishing the Egyptians. But if they see this dark, this plague has nothing to do between the Jew and the Egyptian, they're not going to be moved by this. So therefore, it had to be concealed. So these people who had to die, they died during the first three days of darkness and they were buried. That's number one. That during the days of darkness, the Jews, they had to borrow the gold and silver vessels from the Egyptians. So during those days of darkness, they searched out the possessions of the Egyptians. And they knew exactly where the gold and silver vessels were located or if they had it. And when they left, they said to him, 
they would ask, can I borrow your gold vessel? And they would say, we don't have it. So the Jew would say, but I did see it. I look, I, I know you have it. And they were even not able to identify the location. So therefore, that was the value, we'll see in a moment, of the days of darkness. First, he says that the Rishoyim, among the Jews, had to die. And the Egyptians should not be aware of it. And the Jews should bury their dead during this time. So when the days of darkness pass, they won't realize Jews died. And in addition, they should search out the personal effects of the Egyptians. So when they leave and they, and they say they don't have it, Jews says, I know you do have it, and it's located at such a, such a location. This is the two, two reasons for the darkness. Okay, firstly, see, firstly, you see something interesting. We find the Torah tells us that the Jews themselves did not prepare provisions at the end of the parsha, they did not prepare provisions. That's the whole concept of, of matzah. They were, they were rushed out, and because they rushed out, the dough didn't have time to leaven, so therefore we have matzah. Now, and then, what was the value of that? So Rashi says, the Torah is revealing this to us to tell us the worthiness of the Jew, that even though they had no provisions, they went into a desert, which it's it's not survivable unless you have provisions. So why did they go into this unplanted desert? Because they had total trust in Hashem and faith. He will provide, there's nothing to worry about. If Shem's taking you out, God's taking you out, you have nothing to worry about. And this is the Pasuk Rashi cites that Zuchati lo chesed I will remember the kindness of youth. You followed me, walked into a desert, an unplanted land, and therefore I will never forget that kindness. A display of such trust is unheard of. So it seems to be that the reason why, at this point, what's the reason why are they extolled and held at a certain level? Because they went into an unplanted desert. The level of faith they had. Here it seems to be, it's saying that the reason when they died during the days of darkness, this is a month earlier. It says the Rishayim died because they did not want to go out of Egypt. It's not because they didn't have provisions. See, the ones who left at the end, at the time of the Marcus Pachoros, the 10th plague, there they did not prepare for the trip. And Hashem says suddenly, go out. They weren't prepared, they went. But how do you go? Without any level of security. God says, go, you go. You have total faith, trust in Hashem. The ones who died during the days of darkness, they here, they could have they could have prepared all the provisions. They could have prepared everything. Why did they die? They died because they did not want to go out. The Ratzalot says they did not want to go out. That's the reason why they died. Not because they didn't have trust, they didn't want to go into a desert. That's so, so we're talking two different things. You understand? Here they die because they didn't want to go out. I mean, are you a Russia because you don't have that level of faith? That, that, that wouldn't be enough to call, call a person a Russia, right? So they died, they didn't want to go out. It's like certain people, they dedicated life, they're, they, they have an army career. Because when you're in the army, you, know, you, have to, you don't have to make any decisions. These people are slaves all these years. They're now to assume an independent persona that now we're going to fend for ourselves, do for ourselves. It's not so simple. But God said, go out. How do you not go out? It had nothing to do with going into an unplanted, uncharted desert. Not, nothing to do with that. They did not want to go out. God says, you don't want to go out? After seeing what you saw, you remain here. You're going to die. The ones who, who had the faith, who did want to go out, but they, when they wanted to go out at that point, they had no idea they could be caught by surprise and they're not going to have provisions. That happened later at the time of the 10th plague. Hashem says, now go out. But we have no provisions. They could have said that. And they maybe wouldn't have been held accountable. But despite that, they did not in any way hesitate. They went out immediately. Therefore, they're held at the special level I'll never forget the kindness which you did on my behalf.